Hey friends, welcome to the Victor Marks Podcast with Victor Marks, founder of All Things Possible Ministries. Welcome to the show where we bring you real conversations faced with life's hard truths, stories of redemption, and the latest from the front lines. Whether you're on the road, getting your day started, or finally settling in, we've got an exciting new episode planned for you. So let's dive in to today's show. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Victor Marks Show. I am here in our new studio with a special guest. This is actually a special show because we are days away from the midterm elections. And obviously I've stepped in to help support candidates that I believe are our best choice. Not perfect choice because until Jesus runs on the ticket, I guess we're just going to have to choose the best choice and my guest today is Heidi Goddard, and I want to thank you for taking the time to be with me today. Well, I'm honored and blessed to be here. Thank you. We are in the final stretch, as evidenced by my voice, and just uh, our, our theme is no stone left unturned, so we are doing all we can to reach as many voters as we can across Colorado. Yeah, we. I mean, you're out there killing it. I've, I've watched your schedule, and um, and it's it's impressive the level of commitment and tenacity that you have. Uh, let me ask you, why are you running for governor? Oh, I'm so ticked off about what they've done to our beautiful state. Just in four years, things have dramatically changed. We have skyrocketing crime, out of control inflation, um, a huge drug problem here, especially with fentanyl, and yeah. our kids are in crisis. So I'm a mom of four. I want my kids to stay here and live here, my future grandkids. So I'm going to be the change I want to see in politics and get this stuff done, turned around. Well, you, now, you don't really talk like a politician. <laughs> uh, should we be worried or comforted by that? I hope you'll be comforted. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a problem solver. I'm an entrepreneur. I started one of the country's largest pet care franchises, Camp Bow Wow. So oh, yeah. dogs are one of my passions, but my other passion is kids and helping kids with difficult issues like suicide, uh, mental health crisis, drug addiction. They're really hurting right now. And so yes. if our kids aren't okay, nothing's okay. And that's the perspective I'm coming from. Well, it's a truth, and I and I I thank God that you've stepped into this battlefield. It's a war zone for sure, uh, especially when you're addressing what I would consider uh, Jared Polis. He's an extremist in my viewpoint on some positions that he's taken. Uh, he has made Colorado a sanctuary state, and that has affected us greatly with crime. Uh, I think we're fourth in the nation. A lot of people listening right now wouldn't have known that, but. I think we're fourth in the nation for crime, and uh, we have the highest inflation rate. Is that correct? Since Biden took office, we have the highest inflation rate in the country at 16%, which is costing the average family in Colorado an extra almost $1,000 a month to live and work and raise a family here. And that's a felt problem. That's not just a philosophical problem. That's a felt problem that people want to see change and you are the person that's willing to get in there, roll up your sleeves and get it done as a business person, as a mom, and someone who cares for the family. We have a mutual friend, Charlie Kirk, and uh, I know he appreciates you to no end and is really hoping and praying. Uh, and it's looking good. You've surprised a lot of pundits, haven't you? Well, Jared Polis is doing everything he can to stop me. He tried to stop me in the primary by putting $3 million in to help my opponent. We were one of those states, and we eked it out. He tried to stop me when I ran for regent statewide about six years ago when I ran against one of his good friends and one of the crafters of the blueprint here in Colorado, which flipped Colorado, Alice Madden. And now he's put $25 million in, him and his groups have, in the last eight weeks to try and stop us here. But, you know, we've got the people of Colorado on our side. No amount of money is going to allow him to run from his terrible record. And I think that's what people understand and know in a very real sense. He is in Biden's camp. Uh, he's an extremist in his views. And um, I know from our position as a Christian and a, a, obviously a pro-life person, uh, you're happy that Roe v. Wade was turned over. He is not. 
Well, it's really a state's rights issue. And that's where um, even Ruth Bader Ginsburg agreed with me. And so we've got to push that decision back to the states. And Jared Polis's decision to sign a bill to make it okay to have an abortion up until a baby's birth date here in Colorado is I'm terrible. Sorry. And I don't believe that's where the people of Colorado stand. So I've made a commitment to take it back to a vote of the people of Colorado. And I believe we're going to be able to change that. I do too. And that's what's needed. Um, in the area of crime, I, I touched on the crime is out of control here in the state, which who would have ever thunk it? Um, we're number one for auto theft, I believe. Number one in bank robberies in the nation. Uh, so my question and a lot of people are wondering, I have teenagers uh, and they're driving and I tell them, don't go around certain areas uh, because it's a real issue. What do you plan to do in the area of law enforcement uh, amongst this whole season of defunding police and, you know, that whole thing? What, what, what do you think you can do that will make a difference in Colorado? Well, there's a lot we can do. I was raised by a reserve police officer, so I'll be a law and order governor. I'll have the backs of law enforcement. Yes. But there were some very bad bills that were passed that Jared Polis signed. One was decriminalizing fentanyl and creating a sanctuary state out of Colorado, which has created a huge drug problem here, which is very tied to the crime. Um, the other thing he did was make it a misdemeanor to steal cars worth less than $2,000. Oh, my goodness. That's been a tragedy. And finally, they've got this catch and release kind of idea that we want to empty out the prisons and make it hard to put bad guys in jail. That will stop when I become governor. We have the fourth highest recidivism rate in the country, which means that repeat offenders are doing most of the crime here. So we've got to turn that around. Yeah, I, you know, as someone who has uh, spent a lot of time in Iraq uh, with our organization of high-risk humanitarian work, I can remember being in Iraq, uh, just finishing an engagement against ISIS. We were recovering and rescuing women and children. And I, I tuned in to our local news. I called a signal. And there was another shooting, yet another shooting in Colorado Springs. And I thought, it's weird that I feel more safe right now at night in a certain city in Iraq than I would just walking downtown Colorado Springs. And again, I think it's because of the things that the governor has done to allow criminals to feel a freedom without consequences. And you said it, law and order. People are ready for law and order, Heidi. That's a big part of what our country is all about. It's respecting law and order. It's also about freedom. And our freedoms have been taken away dramatically under Jared Polis. He shut down our schools, our kids' sports. He shut down churches and kept pot shops open. And he still has us under an emergency public health order here in Colorado. People don't talk about that much, but he really uses the heavy hand of government to change our lives dramatically here in Colorado. And I'm going to put an end to that. Well, I'll tell you, there are many, many that are supporting you, praying for you, and I think we're going to surprise folks at the polls. Uh, I would say this to those who maybe have a position of, well, she doesn't believe exactly as I believe. And, uh, well, welcome to the world of politics. It's like <laughs> I said in the beginning, until Jesus gets on the ballot, we have to choose the best candidate uh, closest to our values that we believe has integrity and cares. And you are that, or I wouldn't have uh, started promoting you. Um, and I remember I, I, I took a stand, I promoted your Instagram page, and a couple of thousand people were added to it, and I thought, this is good. Because people <laughs> trust our position, right? Um, what can people do, kind of in the final part of this, what would you recommend people do, Heidi, uh, who maybe are not thinking about voting? Uh, or can help you in the campaign? Well, goodness, it is all hands on deck. Bill Owens, the last Republican governor here, won by only 8,000 votes. So it is going to be tight. We need every voter across Colorado who wants change to show up in this election. And we need your help. This is going to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. We're not going to win in the airwaves with him spending $25 million on ads. 
So if everyone can go to HeidiForGov.com and either donate or volunteer to help, we'll put you to work. Even from your couch, you can download an app and make phone calls. And then follow us on social media and share, 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 especially those debate clips. Um, we, the, My favorite debate is the one in Colorado Springs. It's on our website under events. There's lots of fun clips you can share from it that show a very distinct difference between me and Jared Polis. That's the best advertising we could ask for. And I need my army of helpers across Colorado to get that out there. Well, thank you. And we'll, we'll get it done. Well, as I close, do you mind if I pray for you? I would love that. All right, Lord, thank you for Heidi and Lord, her campaign team. Thank you for putting this on her heart that she would step into this realm. That's not fun. A business person can take a lot easier path than to get into politics, but she cares for people. I know that she loves you. She loves the family. And Lord, it is a battle of good and evil that we see that is being fought out in politics on the values and morals that we believe in and are being taken away, including our freedoms. So God, I pray that you bless, sustain her, provide all that's needed. Uh, and Lord, bless her. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, well, Heidi, thanks for being on the program. And I look forward to calling you governor very soon. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be back as soon as I am. <laughs> well, I enjoyed that. And I appreciate everyone tuning in for this. You know, with these midterm elections coming up, there's a lot of consternation out there about sometimes candidates, you know, who don't hold to our convictions 100%. Um, you know, so people go, well, I'm just not going to vote. I've heard that even from friends. And I'm like, well, even in a philosophical way, the lesser of two evils is still the better of the greater evil in your mind if someone doesn't match up. And I think people need to remember, unless Jesus Christ is running for office, you'll always be voting for the lesser of two evils. And uh, morality, uh, my friend, Pastor Rob McCoy says, morality is defined as you know, not doing what is wrong, but character is defined as doing what is right. And all that's needed, we all know this, all that's needed for evil to trump up, triumph is for moral men and women to do nothing. Uh, the right candidate may not be perfect, but in the case of Heidi, her character is evident of her willingness to step in to this, really it's a blood sport of the political arena, and, and do what needs to be done. So please don't let the good become the casualty of perfect. And remember politics is done by addition and multiplication, not by division and subtraction. And I'll just say this in closing, I, you know, I've, I support friends like Herschel Walker and I'm thank God for Kerry Lake. And there's other candidates that are gonna upset and change the, the the stronghold, the lockdown of our freedoms that this country's been under, under President Biden, and then under those who've been running and been in positions of authority over us. And it requires Christians, non-Christians, people of faith, no faith, but people of moral character to stand up and vote the best candidate in. To not vote is a vote for the greater of two evils. If you're like, well, I don't, and I'll tell you, uh, we need everybody to step up for these midterms. And uh, thanks for keeping Heidi in prayer. Go to her website, go to her social media accounts, follow and share. And uh, thank you guys. For those of you who get offended that I use this special podcast, uh, this day for a special podcast, well, it's okay to be offended sometime when there's a greater good needed to be done. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of God. Go get it done. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. We'd love to stay connected with you and invite you to the conversation beyond this podcast. You can check out more of the work we're doing around the world at victormarks.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked in the show notes. Be sure to drop us a comment in the review section if today's show has impacted you in any way or if there's anything you'd like to hear more of. We're always encouraged to hear from you. Thanks for spending your time with us. Until next time.